Hallelujah. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And it's good that we can give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah to the Almighty God this morning. Hallelujah to our awesome God this morning. Let us lift up the name of Jesus because he is great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
is what you want from me. Yeah, yeah. So take my heart, take my heart, and hold it, hold it, my mind, my mind. Just for me, just for me. Take my will, Lord, take my will. Just for me, just for me. To your heart, to your, to your soul. Say brokenness, brokenness, brokenness is what I long. to glorify the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are going to ask God to take us to the higher ground. Hallelujah.
Even though sometimes we may fail, God never give up on us. And so we should never give up on him. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, God, for who you are. And there is none like God to you. Hallelujah. And we are asking for double blessings this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Double favor this morning Hallelujah. in our lives. God. Hallelujah. is good Hallelujah. and we should give him all the praise that he deserved this morning he deserved every ounce of this praise hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah hallelujah 
and it is coming from our hearts this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To give him all the praise from the bottom of our hearts. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Indeed, God is great.
You're the God of everything, no one like you. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He's worthy to receive glory. Worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive all of our praise. All of our praise belong to him. Because it is in him we live and move and have our being. He woke you up this morning. He set you on your way. You didn't wake up yourself this morning. You didn't get up in your own strength this morning. You got up because God woke you up. You're alive today. Not because of your strength. But because of the grace of God. Had it not been for his grace. Where would I be? Had it not been for his mercy. Where would you be? It is in him we live and move. And have our being. Is not your money in the bank keeping you alive. Is not the food you're eating keeping you alive. It is the grace of God. Is not your education keeping you alive. Is not your job keeping you alive. It is the grace of God that is sufficient to keep you. So that's why when we come into the house of God, we got to put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Shake off. Tell somebody, shake off the spirit of heaviness. Shake it off. Anything that have you bound, shake it off. Anything that trouble in your mind, shake it off. Shake it off. And give the Lord what belongs to him. Break forth in praise because God is a good God. The songwriter say, Lord, you are good. And your mercies. Let's do that song. Lord, you are good. Let's just let's just sing that love song to Jesus. Lord, you are good. Come on everybody, put your hands together. Pump up the praise in the house. Come on. Yeah. Lord, you are good and you must see enjoy it forever. Lord, you are good and you must see Enjoy it forever People from every nation and town From generation to generation We worship you Ooh. Hallelujah, hallelujah We worship you For who you are We worship you
musicians. Sometimes you just, you may be seated, you just got to give God. You have to dig deep and give God that extra, that extra ounce of worship. Amen? Because the Bible says he dwells in the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. That means when we begin to praise him, God shows up. Whatever is keeping you bound, and ever you feel depressed, you break out in praise. Break out in praise. The devil sometimes uses situations and circumstances to depress you, to suppress you. But you free yourself when you begin to praise God. Because when you begin to praise God, you, you draw God to your presence and when God turns up nothing that is holding you down can stand his presence it's half to let you go and you yourself will when you begin to praise God will receive the release prayers are more than words that you utter they are declarations that enters into the, the spirit realm and shatter the strongholds of the enemy, shatter things in the atmosphere, shatter things that is in your own heart and mind and set you free. It's good to see all of you in the house of God today. We thank God for what he is doing in your lives. I want you to know that what God is doing in your lives is a work in progress. Amen? He is not finished with you yet. You are not perfect, but God is perfect. And God will strengthen you and enable you to strive to perfection. Brother O, can you come? He's asked for special prayer. It's good to have O with us. He, he left St. Vincent and went up to, to the, the, the Virgin Islands. Right. And he was impacted by COVID there. But he never failed to join us on our Wednesday Zoom Bible study. And he came home and he was in quarantine for a while, but he decides to come back to God. This morning he has asked for special prayer because he is accepted in a university and he, he wants us to pray for him. Is that all right? That's the scripture. So everybody just stretch your hand out to Brother O. Can I get the oil? Can somebody just see if the oil is in? Father, we thank you for him this morning. Let's just celebrate the goodness of God in this young man's life. That he has seen it fit to, to serve you. To worship you. In your hands. Father, we anoint our brother this morning. And the saints agree with me as we pray for him. We come to you believing that all things are possible with you that you can open up his mind and that you can give him favor and success. So, Father, we, we rebuke every neg negative thought. We, we cancel every negative idea that the enemy may place in his mind now. Every spirit of fear that may be bothering him as to whether or not he 
has made the right decision. We cancel them in the name of Jesus. We speak to every spirit and we command them to leave his mind alone. Leave his body alone. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will cause your supernatural power to overshadow him and to fill him and give him divine unction to function. Give him divine wisdom. Give him divine knowledge. Give him divine understanding and give him a determination, God, to press on because it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. But I pray, oh God, that you will cause him, God, to rise up, oh God, in you. I pray that you would cause him to rise up with a spirit of excellence, a determination to succeed. I pray that this mind will, oh God, be em empowered. This, this mind will be renewed. That this mind will come alive and this mind will begin to download heavenly information. In the name of Jesus, I delete everything that is not of you. And God, I loose the Spirit of God to saturate him as he study. Give him understanding heart. Give him divine wisdom. I pray that he will excel above and beyond, O oh God, that he will come out oh, on top in all of his grades. Father, I pray that you will provide everything that he needs, O oh God, to, 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 to excel, to achieve the, the, the desired objectives in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for doing it now. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. God bless you and God be with you. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Well, as you know, we've been studying for the, for the several weeks the attributes of God under the team, knowing the God we serve. It's very important to know the God you serve. And we have to know about him, but we also have to know him. Your knowledge of God must bring you into a relationship with God that will transcend any other relationship. It is very important that you have an experiential knowledge of God. Not just to know about him, but to know him him personally we know a lot about people but we never met them we have never come into contact with them i don't want that to be your situation with god you must not only know about god but you must know him the knowledge that you have about god must drive you to a relationship with god so that you can know how to respond to circumstances, how to respond to your fellow human being, how to respond to God himself when you know who God is and what he can do. We learn that God is omnipotent, that he is all-powerful, that he is sovereign. We learn that God is omnipotent, omniscient. He knows everything. That he is omnipresent. That he is everywhere at the same time. Amen? Right here now. Even right here now. God is among us. We also learn that God can be more here than there. When you need him... You can call on him and he can show up in a stronger way, in a mightier way, here than somewhere else. And that is the manifest presence of God. Today we want to talk about attribute number 12. The grace of God. Last week we did the mercy of God. Today we are going to do the grace of God. This is such a 
a broad topic, but I'm going to give you the grace of God from a New Testament perspective. The grace of God is a constant theme in the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And it culminates in the New Test Testament with the coming of Jesus to make the ultimate sacrifice for sin, which is an expression of God's grace. John chapter 1 verses 17 tells us, For the law was given through Moses, and grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Father, let your word go forth this morning with power. And let your words fall on good ground. Give your people receptive hearts and clarity of thought to understand your word and to receive your word with faith and meekness. Your word which is able to transform their lives and access the divine favor and blessing of God. Father, have your way in my life and in this place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The word great, the word grace translated in the New Testament comes from the Greek word charis, which means favor, blessing, or kindness. So whenever you see that word grace, we are talking about favor. God's grace means that he favors you. We don't deserve it, but you get it. The word grace in biblical palang can like forgiveness and repentance and regeneration and salvation means something as broad as describing the whole of God's activity towards mankind. An accurate and common definition describes grace, as I said before, as the unmerited favor of God towards man. It means we don't deserve it. We don't merit it. But he gave it to us anyway. You and I can all extend grace to others. But when the word grace is used in connection with God, it takes on a more powerful meaning. Grace is God choosing to bless us rather than curse us as our sin deserves. Grace is God's benevolence to the undeserving. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 tells us, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We have not done anything to receive God's grace. Could not have done anything. But he favored us. And saved us through our faith. The only way that any of us can enter into a relationship with God is because of his grace towards us. Because of his favor. Because of his blessings. Because of his kindness. 
Grace began in the Garden of Eden when God killed an animal to cover the sin of Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 3, 21 tells us, And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. So, if he is clothing them with animal skin, that means the animal had to die. Amen? And that's the first move that God made towards the first man and the first woman. He could have killed them for, this, for their disobedience. But rather than destroying them, he chose to make a way for them to be right with him. Because God had a plan, a greater plan. He had a backup plan. The pattern of grace continued throughout the Old Testament when God instituted blood sacrifices as a means to atone for sinful men. But it was not physical blood of those sacrifices per se that cleansed sinners. It was not the blood of the animals that really cleansed sinners. It was the grace of God that forgave those who trusted in him. It was not really the blood. It's the blood of the animals couldn't take away your sins. It was the grace of God, the favor of God. The goodness of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 4 tells us that it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. But that was a symbol that God used as a reminder. It was an atonement for sin. And it foreshadowed the complete and perfect sacrifice of the blood of Jesus on the cross that was to come. So sinful men showed their faith by offering sacrifices to God, blood sacrifices that God required. Genesis chapter 15 verses 6 tells us that Abraham believed God and it counted unto him and he counted it to him as righteousness. The word believe in the Bible means more than simply agreeing in our minds that something might be true. It means trust that we believe so strongly in God that we, we are willing to commit our lives to him and live the way we know he wants us to live. So, so believing, to believe in God is not just to say you believe, but to act on what you believe. Amen? Amen? To surrender your lives totally to God and to trust Him no matter what. Trust Him at all times. Even when things are not going the way you want it. Trust God. Because all things work together for good to them that love God and are called to His purposes. The Apostle Paul began many of his letters with the phrase grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't saying grace and peace from me. When you pay close attention to what Paul was saying, it is from the Father. Romans 1, 7. 
is an example. And Paul said to the Romans, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from, the, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He was extending God's grace, God's favor. He, he was basically saying God's favor is on you. God's blessing is on you. Then he called them saints. And saints simply means sacred, holy ones, set apart. So we are all saints because we are called to be set apart to fulfill God's purposes in our lives and in this earth. Paul is also extending the grace of God to us which are the blessings of God and the kindness of God. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us this, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we see again Paul is proclaiming over the church at Ephesus the grace of God. The favor of God. And it wasn't coming from Paul himself, but it was coming from who? From God. First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 tells us also grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God shows both mercy and grace. But they are not the same. Mercy withholds a punishment that we all deserve. We saw that last week. But grace gives a blessing that we don't deserve. Amen? Mercy withholds a punishment that we all deserve. But grace gives a blessing. Hallelujah that we don't deserve. I say hallelujah because I think of where I am in my life today. I don't deserve to be where I am. It is God's grace that have me standing here. It is God's grace that keeps me going. It is God's grace that opened doors for me. There are people who should have had some of the things that I have, the position that I have. But for some reason, God favored me. Sometimes I'm traveling and I'm in the back of a line and an airport. And some official will come and say, come with me. And I'm trembling, want to know what I do. Then he said, give me your passport. Stamp it. And before you know it, I am out. I said, favor. Favor. I don't deserve it. You know, you know they have some people who go around just to help people. And, but they just pick me. They pick me. Or they pick you. When you see things like that happening to you, you know it's God's grace. When you see strange things happening to you as a child of God that you, you didn't deserve, you know it's God's grace. Pay attention to your life. Pay attention to what's happening. Pay attention to what you pray for.
Titus chapter 3 verses 5 tells us, He saves us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. is not because of what we have done. Hallelujah. In mercy, God chose to cancel our debt by sacrificing His perfect Son in our place. By the death of His Son, God got justice and we got mercy. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 21 tells us, For our sake, He made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He passed the punishment on Jesus so that you and I can become the righteousness of God. By his grace, he extends his blessing, his kindness, his favor. To become the righteousness of God, we must accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And to do this means we must enter into a covenant relationship with him. Yes, Christ died for the sins of the whole world. He has forgiven the sins of the whole world. He has extended grace and mercy. But you have to receive it. You have to receive it. And you receive it by receiving the work that Jesus did. You receive it by entering, entering into a covenant relationship with God. An agreement that you will serve him. That you will obey his laws. That you have accepted all that he has done for you. And then begin to walk in obedience to his commandments. But God goes even further than extending his mercy to us. He also extends his grace to his enemies. Romans chapter 5 verses 10 says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now than we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Once we were enemies of God, but now because of the death of his Son, we have been reconciled. He also offers us forgiveness. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8 tells us. For I will be merciful towards their iniquities. And I will remember their sins no more. You know God is, is not like man. We will say I forgive you. But I ain't forget what you say. And I will I forget what you do to me. But I forgive you. But God is saying, I will not remember your sins anymore. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 7 tells us, In him we have redemption through his blood. We're talking about Jesus here. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his, according to the riches of his grace. There is riches in the grace of God, riches of love and riches of favor and kindness and great blessings. He also offers us Reconciliation. Colossians chapter 1, 19 to 20 tells us, For in him, that's Jesus, 
all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Hallelujah. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood on his cross. Jesus came to reconcile all things to himself in heaven and in earth. And you and I are beneficiaries of that reconciliation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Brother, and you and I have been reconciled to Christ. We have been bought with a price. And we are in right standing with God through Jesus Christ. And any man or woman that is without Christ, this same reconciliation is offered, is extended to them. Jesus wants to reconcile himself unto you. He wants to reconcile with the backslider. He wants to reconcile with the adulterer. He wants to reconcile with the murderer. He wants to reconcile with the homosexual, the lesbian. He wants to reconcile with the vilest offender. The devil which is your enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants to give us eternal treasures in heavenly places. He wants to give us eternal treasures. In Luke chapter 12, verses 33, Jesus says, sell your possession and give to those in need. This will store up treasures for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven never gets old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it and no more can destroy it. When you give to those in need, you are storing up treasures in heaven. And the treasures in heaven, they are secured. This is why it's important for us to be givers. This is why the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. Your greatest blessing is not in receiving. I remember some years ago a sister said, she has the, the, the spirit of receiving. But she used to get a lot of things from people, you know, friends all over the world used to really bless her. And she said, I have the, the spirit and the gift of receiving. But I say, sister, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Because your greatest blessing is not in your receiving. Your greatest blessing is in your giving. Because when you give, it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over. Shall God cause men to pour into your bosom. So when you give, it will come back to you. It will come to your children and your grandchildren. So it is good to give. I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking about money here. Give a good word of advice. Give encouragement. Give love. Show kindness. Show generosity. Show forgiveness. If you are forgiven, people will forgive you. If you are merciful, people will be merciful unto you. If you want to make friends, you got to be friendly. What you give, you get. So if you say you're lonely, check yourself. Are you friendly? Can people talk to you? Do you greet people? Do you love people? Do you care about people? This is what we are called to be. We are called to be the light. We are called to be the salt. 
We can't go into hiding. When God bless you, you can't keep it to yourself. When God bless you, you have to let go some of it. Because if you hold on to everything, it's rotten. And you have to throw it away. Some of the food will spoil. And you will have to throw it away. Worms will infest it. When God said to bless you, it is not for you to hold it. But to let it go. Take what you want for your family. Don't be afraid to give. You will see how more come back. It's called the principle of sowing and reaping. You have to keep sowing. When you give love, you sow sowing. When you give mercy, you sow sowing. When you give money, clothes, food, whatever, you sow sowing. You can't eat all. No. And that's grace. Just as God is gracious, just as God is kind and loving, just as God has extended favor to us, you and I must extend favor to others. That is what he wants us to be. That is the quality of the child of God. Show favor. Show favor to people who don't deserve it. That's what God wants you to be. Rise above the negativity. Show favor and God will favor you. God will prosper you. God has a blessing for you. That you do not have room in you. In, in, in your house, in your storerooms to contain. And you are not alone. He gives you the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 11, verses 13 tells us if you then, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? We must give good gifts to our children, to our friends, to people. And God, if you ask Him, He will give you the Holy Spirit. Do you know who is the Holy Spirit? You cannot live without the Holy Spirit. The Christian life cannot be lived without the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus told his disciples when he departed to wait in Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. Amen. And they were waiting in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came as a, a sound of a mighty rushing wind and the Holy Spirit sat upon them and as after they were filled with the Holy Spirit they began to preach the gospel the ministry took off ask God for the Holy Spirit and he will give you the Holy Spirit and when he the Spirit of truth is come because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He will reveal truth to you. And God's word is truth. And when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And he that is set free is free indeed. The spirit of God will teach you. But the earth, the spirit of God will come upon you. He will teach you. Things that you never study, he would reveal it to you. God will teach you how to run your business. God will teach you how to run your home. God will teach you how to manage your relationship. 
how to manage your family. God will teach you by the Holy Spirit how to manage your finances. The Holy Spirit wants to be a part of your everyday lives. Not just when you come to church on a Sunday morning. Some people think the Holy Spirit is something that comes and they start a tremble and they roll up and down. That's not the Holy Spirit. And if you go to church and you ain't rolling up and down and, and, and rolling up all over the place, then you ain't have the Spirit. That is not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is an intelligent being. He is the Spirit of wisdom. He leads and directs God's people in decision making, in planning. I heard a story when I was in New York earlier this year that this president was invited to this church I think it's the president of Zambia and they broke loose and start rolling and jumping all over the place and talking in tongues and, and he get up and walk out he said this is what you invite me here for he didn't see anything intelligent he see people making noise and just carrying on with emotions. That is something if you believe that you need to put that aside. God is an intelligent God. He is the creator of the universe. And the Holy Spirit was part of the creation. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, hover over the waters. It's the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father together created the heavens and the earth everything that you see they are created they are intelligent beings super intelligent and that's why God sent the Holy Spirit because he's more intelligent than you and me so being filled with the Spirit is not a feeling being filled with the Spirit is to be filled with divine power, divine knowledge, divine wisdom, divine understanding. To make good decisions in your life. To walk in obedience to God. To walk in love and honor and integrity. These are the things that the Holy Spirit portray portrays. He is not the author of confusion. This is very important that you pray and ask God for the Holy Spirit. Especially to live in these trying times. These testing times. People are going to test you. They're going to try your faith. They're going to try to get you to sin against God. But you need the Holy Spirit. To help you to think before you talk. You need the Holy Spirit to get you to think before you act. And God wants you to be gracious. He wants you to be gracious. Even as he is gracious. John 3 16 says. And we all know it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God, verse 17 says, did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. There is power in the name of Jesus. As I said, to believe in Jesus is more than just saying you believe. It's not just something that you think in your mind. To believe in Jesus is to be obedient. To believe in Jesus is to walk with Jesus. To believe in Jesus is to accept 
his principles, his teaching. And when you accept them, you will, you, you will make your way prosperous. He never said that there will be no trouble. But God will be with you and he will fight for you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will take care of you. God is a spirit. You cannot see him. But God will always be with you. Because he is the omnipresent God. He lives outside of time and space. When you think of God, you have to think outside the box. He is bigger than all your problems. Bigger than all your troubles. If he created the universe and everything that is in it, who are you and I? For him to fix when we have problems. Jesus said only believe. All things are possible. To them that believe. Could you stand with me? Grace is God's giving the greatest treasure. To the least deserving which is every one of us. He's given the greatest treasure to the least deserving. Who does things like that? Father, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is in the house, speaking to our hearts. I pray that your Holy Spirit will even now begin to minister. Come on, worship leaders, just come and just begin to raise a song. Pray that your Holy Spirit begin to minister to your people. Cause your word to fall on good ground today. Let your words germinate and bring forth good fruit in due season. Everybody lift your hands. Father. I pray for an impartation of your spirit, impartation of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and grace to fall on your people. Breathe upon them, Lord. Breathe upon us all. Erase every negative thing from our hearts and minds that we have taught about you and fill us God with heavenly blessings you are God all by yourself you're a God of love and a God of mercy and a God of grace teach us God to walk in grace teach us to extend grace and mercy to others Teach us not only to be receivers, but to be givers. Give us of good things to our children. Give us of good things to people. To make time to encourage each other. To make time to pray for each other. To make time to forgive. So that we can experience, oh God, a deeper level in you draw us closer to you and forgive us where we failed you forgive us God for our shortcomings transform our minds transform our thoughts transform our hearts by the power of, of the word let your word go forth with the power of the Holy Spirit God and bring change to your people 
draw your people closer to you God and fill fill us with power from on high we need your power God we need your power we need your Holy Spirit you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light you have called us to be the salt of the earth you've called us to be the light of the world let our light shine in this nation God so that we can bring healing so that we can bring transformation so that we can bring peace in our homes in our communities Holy Spirit of God over over this place as you move over the waters of creation when the dry land appear over over our homes and our, our our hearts God and take away our stony hearts and our stiff nakedness and give us hearts of flesh oh father move in this place Holy Spirit, move in this place. We thank you for doing it now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you.